Hello and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nasheen Bukhari, bringing you the latest and most exciting entertainment news from Showbiz World. In today's episode, we will discuss Ellen DeGeneres' decision of leaving her fans emotional by saying goodbye to her show, followed by a movie review on 2013 release Her. But first things first, let me quickly take you to the top stories of the day. Ellen DeGeneres says tearful goodbye in final season of her talk show. Almodovar's upcoming film starring Penelope Cruz embroiled in controversy. Captain Marvel 2, Brie Larson hypes up epic sequel as filming begins. Oscar winner Michael Caine to receive the highest honor at Czech Film Festival. Ryan Reynolds talks about his new film, Free Guy. And now moving to our top story of the day. Ellen DeGeneres shared the bittersweet news that she will be ending the Ellen DeGeneres show after its 19th season next year. To discuss this further, we are joined by entertainment journalist Jamie Boddy. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Ellen tweeted about the farewell season yesterday, announcing that the last season airs on September 13th. Now, we all grew up watching Ellen DeGeneres all this time. Announcing end of an era after 18 years. How do you feel about it? As you said, we've a lot of the general um, population now have grown up with Ellen in one way or another, whether they know her from her stand up acts, like her standalone acts, or from her actual show, which is going into its 19th season, which mm -hmm. in itself is such an achievement. So I quite enjoy a cup of tea and watching Ellen in the morning, so I will miss put, mm -hmm. putting that on my TV. Right. And Ellen was unfortunately criticized heavily last year during the pandemic lockdown when a lot of people from her own staff came forward with allegations regarding her behavior on set. She was even accused of bullying on set. But nowhere did she ever, you know, uh, we, we never found her standing for her own self, for her own defense. How would you like to comment on that? Yes, it is a bit of a grey area, isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. those allegations popped up last summer and then all of a sudden the show is wrapping up yeah. its 19th season. Mm -hmm. So I think unless you're heavily embedded into the Ellen brand, we'll never mm -hmm. fully know. But they do seem, it's quite of a coincidence, isn't it, that they both happen at the same time. But she has said herself that she wanted to end it mm -hmm. after the 16th season and was kind of not as much pressured, but the producers and stakeholders did want the show to go on. So she has found this season, the 19th season, to be the perfect time to wrap. Right. And Jamie, do you think that this pressure of allegations can be one of the causes? Like, we're just speculating here, but like you said, that suddenly after the acquisitions, the, sh the, uh, the management and even Alan herself decided to end the show. So you can, can, can one say that the, this is one of the causes for Ellen to end the show, one of the major causes, you can say? Yes, definitely. It's hard, is it, to fully say, but it almost seemed like the brand of Ellen was this unstoppable force, wasn't it? She's mm -hmm. won so many Emmys and People's yeah. Choice Awards. But all of a sudden, there was a gap in the armor. I think it was around 10 employees mm -hmm. came forward with different allegations, and it's kind of slowed the momentum. I know Ellen lost a lot of viewers on her show, so it might be a chance for her to step back, reevaluate, see where she wants to go next and find the next challenge. But yes, I definitely do think there's something suspect there. Right. Uh, the queen of comedy, while talking to the audiences, and she told them about her decision of ending the season, she added, one time I was talking to Alexa and Siri answered, and then another time I was talking to the TV and I accidentally texted my eye doctor. The point is, I need to take a break from talking. So do you think that it's kind of, um, you can say she, she's trying to tell that her health does not allow her to continue or the age she's in, that uh, asks some different questions from her to take a break and, you know, sit back home and relax now? Um, yeah, I think so. And obviously, staying at the trajectory she's on, that there's a big risk of burnout to be filming these and they're not just a short one or two month filming i believe she films over five or six months constantly new guests and although she is the face of the show she's obviously involved with 
the script writing, the punchlines, it's then all the personal appearances that also come off the back of the show and any radio interviews and phone-ins. So it's, it's not just isolated to those couple of hours of filming each day. So I think to avoid burnout, mm -hmm. now is a really good time for her to step away mm -hmm. and almost kind of reinvent the will because in the entertainment industry, you can quite often be pigeonholed. So she wants, I think if she wants to continue to be a stand-up comedian, she does need to kind of break away from that format, but she's not known so much as a daytime talk show host, mm -hmm. but still as Ellen the comedian. Right. Um, Jamie, Ellen also added that her instinct told her it's about time. As a comedian, she has always understood the importance of timing. However, Ellen has always been at the peak of her performance. So in your opinion, do you think that this was the right decision taken at the right time? Well, that's a really good question. I feel that she was at the peak of her stardom, of her game, of her wit. And maybe because of the allegations, she is stepping away a bit earlier than she would have liked to. Maybe she's not quite wrapping up this show in the way she would have liked it to end. Mm -hmm. However, I think as long as she strikes while the iron is hot, so to speak, have a bit of a break, spend some time at home with Portia, and then kind of come back full, like full throttle, I'm sure she, she won't be out of Hollywood's limelight for too long. Mm -hmm. Uh, the slot is already predicted to be given to Kelly Clarkson now. Do you think that this will make up for Ellen's absence? Having seen some episodes of Kelly's already talk show, um, mm -hmm. her actual talk show, she's amazing. She has, has obviously adds in her mm -hmm. singing. She has a very lovable way about the way in which she presents. Mm -hmm. Similar to Ellen, Ellen's humour is a lot more, a bit more sharp and quick and dry. Yeah. But I think Kelly will kind of fill that talk show void however it's very rare i think for talk shows to last for so long so whether or not this kind of shows ellen was such a big player in the talk show realm mm -hmm. now that she's out of it will other talk shows start to kind of follow suit and try and kind of zhuzh it up a bit or have kind of keep their mm -hmm. short run and um, make their run shorter who knows right uh, jamie as a comedian uh, ellen has this charm of engaging audience especially women and she has actually set the bar for other Daily Show hosts. Do you think that there ever will be America's new sweetheart on TV after Ellen leaves? Ellen was such a change maker, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. One of the first daytime talk show hosts to ho host her own show and also yeah. to be such a prominent member of the LGBT community. So she was definitely a change maker. She's paved the way for many females and members of the LGBT community. So mm -hmm. yes, I'd like to think now that she's kind of led the ship, other people now will follow. And whether they want to get more into TV, film, comedy, I do definitely think Ellen has kind of paved the way and knocked down some of the barriers that people would have come across. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, do you expect Ellen to show up in another project like Conan O'Brien when he announced that he won't be doing the, the show anymore, however, he will be seen in other projects? So do you expect or do you predict that Ellen will be seen in other projects, you know, uh, exclusively with regards to the comedy shows? I think so. And if you even just think like her voiceover work when she did the voice of Dory and Finding Nemo, she definitely, her voice is so recognizable. Whether she pops up doing the, um, like a one night with type mm -hmm. of live comedy show or does voiceovers of commercials, yeah. I don't, I think people, associate her voice with safety it's familiar they trust it so i think brands will probably be chomping at the bit to get their hands on ellen and her voice to try and see where they can put her and monetize her right and uh, jamie i would really like you to comment on something that raised a lot of eyebrows especially uh, for the fans of ellen that once um some of her um onset crew started to you know uh, speak about her bullying and stuff a lot of people they jumped on the bandwagon that includes a lot of celebrities as well uh, my uh, specific target is nikki tutorials the the youtuber who made it to the headlines that how ellen degeneres treated her but when you see when you look at the show the way she was talking to her the way she was uh you know uh hosting her it was something completely opposite for what nikki told so don't you think that some of the people literally jumped the bandwagon and it, it, it was not the case? Ellen might not have done how she is, you know, being accused of. I think, especially with social media, it can become a bit of an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. It takes one person to say something you slightly agree with or that resonates with you and you, it kind of snowballs. 
But that's not to say that the people that did come forward didn't actually experience some form of toxic work environment or discrimination. So it's hard unless we're fully in the actual show. I can imagine that it's kind of a lockdown. I can imagine what kind of happens on Ellen stays on Ellen. So I can't fully comment on whether or not every accusation was true. Mm -hmm. However, the company, I believe it had around a thousand employees. So with mm -hmm. every job, there's always ups and downs and one bad apple. So with a thousand members mm -hmm. of staff, there has to have been some form of office politics or maybe yeah. a little bit of niggling in the staff room. However, I don't think we're sadly know because I can imagine the team, mm -hmm. the lawyer team behind Ellen as well, I right. can imagine are pretty strong. So to be the first to come forward, that took a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. Right. Jamie, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That was Jamie Body discussing Ellen's decision of ending her show. And now moving to other story details of the day. Oscar-winning Spanish filmmaker Pedro Almodovar's new film was briefly removed from Instagram's parking controversy. You should be ashamed of yourself, Instagram Spanish designer Javier Hain, who created the poster, wrote in a post on the image-centric social network. He accompanied the text with a screen grab of a message he received from Instagram on Monday, stating that the image had been taken down because it violated the network's rules. Brie Larson is currently deep in production for Marvel Studios' upcoming The Marvels. Process that she was able to discuss in a serious XM interview uncovered by Twitter. According to Larson, the whole thing is pretty surreal. And the working on something to the scale of The Marvels is a really unique experience. English actor Michael Caine will receive the top prize at the postponed Czech Film Festival in the city of Karlovy Vary starting later this month. The prolific 88-year-old Oscar winner, known for his roles in Alfie and the Cider House Rules, will get the Crystal Globe Award for his outstanding contribution to the world of cinema. Hollywood star Johnny Depp, best known for the Pirates of the Caribbean series, will be among the stars attending the festival. Ryan Reynolds recently talked about his new film Free Guy, which he said defies classification. Opening in movie theaters on Friday, Free Guy is the story of a bank teller who discovers he is a nameless background player in a hyper-realistic video game. Ryan Reynolds, who is also the producer of this film, added that it, it has become an increasingly rare unicorn in this industry where you get to make a movie that is based on nothing other than an original idea. And that is it from our newsroom. We will be right back after a quick short break with a movie review. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's time to review the 2013 release, Her. Theodora Toombley, an introverted writer, buys an artificial intelligence system to help him write. However, when he finds out about, about the AI's ability to learn and adapt, he falls in love with it. To review the movie, we have a film critic, Nuan Sen, with us. Nuan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, so, Nuan, this was an amazing innovation in a romance genre by adding sci-fi factor to it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's a very brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very relevant to this day and age. Look at us, we are discussing mm -hmm. this movie through, uh, through Zoom. And uh, I would say basically, uh, basically it also discusses, it basically uh, has issues of uh, loneliness and depression, it tackles those issues as well. Right. And uh, we see a lonely, depressed mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. who uh, finds an unlikely companionship through uh, uh, an electronically uh, mm -hmm. generated voice. And uh, so we are all lone people, mm -hmm. but being alone is something different. Being loneliness is a killer. Mm -hmm. So for him, ultimately, even though he's alone, but he, he has somebody, he feels that he has a companion. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, this is very, uh, uh, what, what should I say, uh, like, for example, now with uh, COVID and lockdown mm -hmm. and yeah. everything. Very it's relatable to, to these yes, times. Very yeah. uh, we are very, very dependent on media. Uh -huh. So, right. uh, and uh, even I'm addicted to my phone myself. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this, of course, I watched it about four years ago, so this mm -hmm. is a different memory. 
So, but I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's such a brilliant science mm -hmm. sci-fi movie, uh, and uh, it doesn't waste time on unnecessary action sequences uh, or special effects that overpower the narrative. Yeah. It basically focuses on telling a really intelligent story. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the uh, intricate relationship, wrote... Nuan, the intricate relationship of a human and a highly evolved AI assistant played by Scarlett Johansson at an emotional level seems surreal and weird at first, but slowly you start empathizing and believing in it. Yeah, yeah, because it has, it has a very realistic feel to it. So, I mean, obviously, he yeah, yeah, like, uh, gets close to this particular uh, voice that is not real. But, uh, so, but once he finds out that uh, the voice is in love with thousands of other men as well, it's mm -hmm. uh, when he starts feeling jealous. Yeah. So he, it's a very emotional, it's a very human mm -hmm. story. Right. And uh, in, actually, it, I did. In, in a social yes, climate, in a, in a social climate of fake dating profiles and the delusion of falling in love with a photo and not the actual person behind it, it's not so hard to believe that someone could fall in love with an OS. And uh, provided the fact that it was released back in 2013, so many years ago, it's still relatable yeah. and we have seen it happening a lot of uh, times during these days. Yeah, in a sense, because now there are so many dating apps, people I mean, like, and again with lockdown, it's mostly they're talking yeah. online. Exactly. So, I mean, like, uh, you don't know whether, you don't really know the other person, whether it's, uh, it's even a real person or a bot or what, you know, I mean, like, uh, and uh, it could be a completely fake person that you're actually talking to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think what Spike Lee has done is something that Spike Jones, sorry, has mm -hmm. uh, He's only directed about four feature films, mm -hmm. and he's brought, brought, brought a brilliant movie here. Right. Um, and uh, I actually did uh, an article some years ago uh, mm -hmm. speaking about uh, the cycle in love with Dan Weir. So it was basically not just her, it's about similar themes like Ruby Sparks and Lars and the Real Girl. So similar storyline where a uh, lonely person actually ends up uh, finding a uh, Finding some sort of an, uh, some sort of companionship, mm -hmm. some, something that is not real, but it feels mm -hmm. real to that person. Right. And uh, it's, it's very relatable to uh, mm -hmm. the Indian. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, Nuan, I would really like you to talk about Joaquin's portrayal of Theodore as a beautiful writer that goes through a painful divorce. I mean, that that is meticulous. But the way he has portrayed this character, I would really like you to comment on that. Yeah, he's, uh, well, he's a superb actor, and he won last year for Joker. Uh, here you can see that, uh, you can see the level of emotion. He's, yeah. he's, he's very vulnerable and very, uh, mm -hmm. and he shows a lot of respect for this particular character. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the voice, right? You know, I mean, like, uh, and he, he actually finds a true romance, which he didn't have with his wife, or his, mm -hmm. his ex-wife. Yeah. Uh, so he is a very, uh, we find a very sensitive portrayal over there. Yes. As uh, contrast to what we are, okay, he's quite sensitive in Joker mm -hmm. as well. But he, he is uh, he's a very versatile actor. That's Absolutely. Sort of Absolutely. And now coming to Samantha's character, how amazingly Scarlett Johansson makes you believe that it's not just a voice, it's a whole lot of character, which I think every viewer has mm -hmm. portrayed in their head according to their imagination. In a way, she kind of uh, seduces him completely. She's quite manipulative. You know, she's like, uh, well, or again, she's not an actual person. This is what yeah. he wants her to be. So, so the recording kind of it's, it's, uh, it manages to do that. It manages mm -hmm. to make him believe that she's only here. But as I said, he ultimately gets jealous when he finds out that she's not. You know, mm -hmm. this particular voice is in love with many people. Uh, so. Uh, so I think uh, she, I mean, like without doing the person, without uh, through her voice itself, mm. she has managed to, you know, kind of, yeah. uh, it's like what you like, uh, listen to a radio show or something. Right. She uh, she gives all the necessary nuances of the, of the character. Right. Um, and and uh, like you said, that, that Theodore's character was very vulnerable, but the way it ends, 
um, it, it has a very open-ended conclusion where it, had, it has left a lot for the viewers to imagine. Um, so how pragmatic um, do you think that the ending was? Uh, again, as I said, I watched this about four years ago. Sorry, the ending is right now. My own ending has just gone off of my mind. Right. But uh, I did like it <laughs> back then when I watched it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to add that uh, mm -hmm. this reminded me of uh, modern times, Charlie Chaplin's movie mm -hmm. from 1930. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, which is his very first sound sound uh, movie, but uh, people don't speak over there. They they mind they act like a silent movie. Yeah. But you do get voice uh, generated sound, mm -hmm. so you hear machines. Through machines, people actually do speak, but actual people don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. Humans right. don't have a voice. In you know, a similar fashion, mm -hmm. you find this. You know, I mean, like its connection is to the phone. And even our connections are through um, uh, digital devices. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so sorry about the last ending finale. I don't to call it finale, but I, I mm -hmm. it's uh, well. If you take the movie, it's, it's about the whole journey of the movie, right? Not right. just the ending. Absolutely, uh, Nuan. Thank you very much indeed. It was great reviewing this movie with you. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs> That was Nuan Sen reviewing the 2013 release, Her. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care and goodbye.